Mike's Daily Podcast. Well, this show is going to be exciting because I have really no energy. It's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. The last place on earth today, Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, here on F F episode 1542. 1542, the answer to the ultimate question. That's a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference. Mike's Daily Podcast. And Douglas Adams, who has long been gone a long, long, long time ago. Well, Mike's Daily Podcast. There was a tsunami warning in the Bay Area, but now it's done, and I didn't even have time to panic or run. And I guess I should say that someone that used to be on this show through most of 2015 had some big news that you should know. Haley is engaged. Congrats. Mike's Daily Podcast. Haley is engaged and it is going to be, I'm sure, a glorious Mike's wedding. Daily Haley and Podcast. Becca are like Yeah! Such a cute couple. And Becca actually did a drawing once for the show and drew all the characters that you have heard on Mike's Daily Podcast show. And in fact, she listened to quite a few shows. I remember she'd be like, hey, I heard your show today. So this is wonderful news. Congratulations. If I had more energy, I would display it, but I don't because I'm, I woke up this morning going, no, you can't be serious. Really? This time? Of- no. In the morning, I have to get up. Really? Really? Look who walked in. Hi, Mark. It's pretty the Rudy Queen. How are you doing? It's a disgruntled fiddle player to tell you what. What? Yeah, so the Democrats decided that they would uh, concede. And now there's going to be a big wall built. Tell you what. What? Wall. Now, I thought you were mad that Trump said that the wall was going to be more of a symbolic thing. And that it wasn't going to be a physical thing. No, it's going to be a physical thing, Mark. It's going to be a big wall that you can't get around. A huge wall. Because he said that... I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensive. I don't know. And here's today's podcast picture. Okay, well... I won. I won. Trump, anyway, celebrated the big cave that the Democrats made on the shutdown. The podcast pictures of me because this show is about me and this about, show is about me and it always has been and this uh, picture is taken at Lake Chabot a couple weeks ago Basil the boxer and I did this long walk and we were over by Lake Chabot that's the picture you can see it now I like to post a picture of myself, yours truly, Mike Matthews, once in a while so you remember me. Um, that's, oh my gosh, my sinuses just wanted to cave in on top of themselves just at that moment. Wow, that was fun. Have you had that happen to you this year? Yeah. Okay, so what happened was, we walked around the lake, that was the day I saw that, well, I don't have it confirmed by... Security, national security, but there was some weird barbecue going on that I guess may or may not have been affiliated with ISIS. I don't know, but it was scary. I had to get the H double E hockey sticks hell out of there because that was bizarre. There was a, a campground, there's these campgrounds up on one side of Lake Chabot, and I don't know. I mean, cafe, I don't know, could have been anything. But they were not nice. Anyway. They were staring me down. There was some strange stuff going on that day, my friend. But that's either here nor there, over there, with blah, 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 and up there. I watched this thing last night on the Marx Brothers. There were five Harpo, Zeppo, Groucho, Chico, or Chico, and Groucho, Zeppo, and... That's, yeah, I'm missing one. But they were they were in the movies back in the 20s and 30s. And they kept making movies through the 40s 
50s. And even the, in the 60s, Harpo and Chico, I did not know this, they were going to make a television show where they were angels. Yeah, that they were like these cherubs or something. And Groucho made a brief uh, appearance. At this point, though, Groucho was huge after their movie career ended. They, uh, they, which they kept, it really didn't ever end. They kept popping up here and there in all kinds of strange movies. Uh, Groucho showed up in this weird 60s movie that I got to track down. I forgot the name of it. Sippy or Slipper or something with an S. And yeah, it was bizarre. He plays God in it. I got to watch that one. But Groucho is huge because he was the master of ad lib. Which they don't know anymore. They can't ad lib anymore. Oh my god. Ad libbing is an art. And I always appreciate people who can ad lib. And that's my whole comment on the last show about how at award shows, actors suck when they get their awards because they can't do anything that's not written down. They can't think for themselves. They can't ad lib. They can't improvise. But. The, it, and now NPR can't ad lib or improvise. Everything you hear is read, written down. They follow scripts like crazy on their morning edition shows and their All Things Considered. And it, it annoys me. It's like, why aren't you people real? You're, you're, this is the generation. Millennials and, and Gen Zers and Gen Xers even are supposed to be about being real. And, and talk from your gut, from your heart. And nothing is, that's all written, it's all written down. Everything. And they're just reading it. And I hate it. It irks me off. This is off me. That's what I'm saying. Oh, my, my, my. I got a little heated there. I hope you don't mind. But, oh, I'd like my revenge against NPR. Revenge is a dish best serve cold. You think about that. But NPR's. I feel NPR's ratings are going down. I might be wrong. I thought Netflix ratings were going down. But then this story popped up in front of my face and made me angry. That Netflix crossed the $100 billion market cap on a robust subscriber growth. Which I just canceled my Netflix. And I've talked to many people. Okay, two other people. That told me Netflix has nothing for them that they would want to watch. It's all that stupid Stranger Things. People were like, oh, you got to watch Stranger Things. Oh, did you watch Stranger Things yet? And then it, it was so underwhelming. Netflix added more global subscribers than expected in the fourth quarter last year as the video streaming service provider kept viewers hooked with critically acclaimed shows like The Crown and Stranger Things. <laughs> so bring out your day. Bring out your day. I don't know. That did really pointed nowhere, did it? That went to nothing. But whatever. Netflix added 8.33 million total subscribers globally in the quarter. Analysts on an average were expecting subscriber additions of 6.39 million. But it... Uh, oh, really? The had So they, they did... Dang it. They went really over. Well, because they did add 8.3. And they were only saying 6.39. Well, I think it's a peak. And that it's on its way down after this. Especially with all the competition Netflix is going to get. Because Disney's going to start their own channel. And other things are happening. I think what Disney bought Hulu. And so that's going to change. Possibly. We'll see. I am sick of Netflix and stopped watching it. I watched that Marx Brothers thing on YouTube and enjoyed it and that's my point. It was highly influenced by Groucho Marx. In fact, even took over a show. A re, a re tried to rebirth the show, You Bet Your Life. That was that the name of the show? That was or oh, whatever Groucho Marx TV show that lasted forever. That's what I was talking about earlier when when his movie career pretty much was over. Groucho got into TV and ad-libbing on TV with this game show where he'd ask people a question and they would, you know, and, and it would win prizes, fabulous prizes, and he would just improvise and ad-lib the whole thing and he was amazing. And they first discovered his talent for that when he was on 
well, nationally on this Bob Hope show. And the two of them were ad-libbing away. And it was, what? This is great. This is better than the stuff written down for Groucho. So, Bill Cosby replaced Groucho years later. Tried to bring that show back. And Bill Cosby jokes he used to be a comedian to a supportive crowd amid legal battle. And it's his first show since 2015. Um, and he emerged in the public eye. Let's see. DACA recipients temporarily blocked Disneyland. Uh, the entrance. Because it is a small world after all. <laughs> Beneficiaries of the deferred... Who hates... Somebody hates that song. Oh. Uh, Christie's dad hates that song. Just thought I'd point that out. Hey, Christy, if you're listening. I don't know. She may have stopped. Looks like they're busy looking at their Instagram. Christy and Robert's Instagram. They got all kinds of things going on in Los Angeles. But close to them in Los Angeles, actually in Anaheim, Disneyland, beneficiaries of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program and their allies temporarily blocked a vehicle entrance there just as the Senate reached an agreement to end the government shutdown. Brought on in part by a stalemate over the future over the future of uh, DACA recipients, dreamers. They stood in a crosswalk at South Harbor Boulevard around 10 a.m. and blocked buses from entering the Anaheim theme park. The, there were only 15 protesters, but they were quickly removed by law enforcement officials and were relocated to a sidewalk where they continued holding signs and chanting, "No dream, no deal." But by 10:40, they had left the area. That wasn't much of a protest. Shoot. Well, what else can we say about this shutdown that's now open up again? Congress voted late yesterday to reopen the... Oh, hey, I'm getting a call. Just you know I'm on my way, but... Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess there's an accident in the middle lane around Alvarado. Uh, ah. Again, so... Okay. All right, well, I'll keep an eye on everything. All right, appreciate it. Looks like we're starting to move now. Maybe they got to take the blue side. Woohoo! All right, I'll see you in a bit. All right, drive safe, Mike. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Wow, that was Mike on his way to cafe anyway. Yeah, because it's the place to be. And the stupid traffic at 5.53 in the morning. Anyway, traffic. There should be nobody on the roads at 5.53 in the morning. Anyway. Ugh. That's the Bay Area for you. God. Um, so Congress voted yesterday to reopen the government after a three-day shutdown. President Trump, a short-term spending bill that passed after Senate Republican leaders pledged to act on immigration policy next month. They promised. That's all they got was a promise. Do you promise to talk about immigration? Yeah, sure, whatever. Just sign this so we can end the shutdown. That's what it came down to. I was listening to the wonderful show called The Daily that uh, New York Times does. And they were talking about how the whole thing with the, the wall. That, you remember, it used to be a, just a fence? It was just a fence. And at, at the beginning, Trump was saying, I will build a huge super fence. And nobody builds super fences like me. He was doing that in the beginning. And he realized that every time he mentioned it, the crowd, you know, mostly of deplorables, they would go, yeah, build that wall. Keep those people that aren't the same color, skin color as us out. And then he would, then he built it up metaphorically and made it a wall. A big wall, and the more he, the wall, the bigger the wall got in his speeches, the more the the applause break got, the more people were like, yeah, woohoo, yes, walls, oh, God. So that's what happened, and now it's kind of become a symbolic thing. John Kelly, the man behind the scenes at the White House, he said, hey, listen. Trump, you got, and we talked about this on a recent podcast. You gotta, get, you gotta realize where the rubber meets the road here. You can't really have a big wall, a big Great Wall of China, China, 
between America and Mexico, going from sea to shiny sea, from Pacific to Gulf of Mexico. <sighs> Let's see what happens. The House joined the Senate in passing the bill to fund the government through February 8th, reauthorizing the Children's Health Insurance Program. So that was good. And rolling back several health care taxes. Okay. Uh, it passed 81 to 18 in the Senate and 266 to 150 in the House. And that's pretty much it. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. I'm surprised I was able to give you this much show. But I pushed through my fatigue and gave you this amazing program that was full of fascinating information. I met a woman yesterday at the dog park as I was walking Basil the Boxer. And she is intoxicating. She's beautiful. I hope to see her again. That's the one good thing about having a dog and being single. You can maybe meet women and not, then not be single. Who knows? So, Chuck Schumer, it'll be interesting to see what people say about him today. Did he concede too fast? Did he cave too fast? Schumer's thing is it uh, will be able to fight again in the future about this and get this really na- nailed down. We'll see. Next show, it is going to be the president cited an unlikely source, CNN senior White House correspondent Jim Acosta, whom he and aides have called fake news. You are fake news. Fake news. Fake news. As he took a victory lap that began several hours after he signed a three-week stoppage measure into law. Uh, and and he... Okay. That's, that's what's going on. The Democrats caved train? Is that... That's what he's calling it? How creative. Uh, next show, we're going to have the wonderful, what do you call it, and the other people, Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Enjoy your day. Avoid tsunamis. Woohoo! Life is good, my friend, because traffic is finally moving. Oh, no, it stopped again. Damn. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.